and uh, Assistant City Attorney McLean might be able to speak to this better, but the contract was effective uh, or still, um, um, yeah, I want to say, I guess, effective, but basically it, it now provides the, the supplier to, in, to escalate their prices to bring them up to present day, essentially. Right. I think what um, Mr. Casare is, is trying to explain is that the, the contract itself didn't expire. That's why we can do an amended and restated MOU instead of a brand new MOU. Um, rather, the provision in the contract that held the price in place for that 18 months, that provision termed out or timed out. So um, now we're in a place where we can do an amendment, essentially amended and restated MOU with um, the same provider, but with a different price um, uh, in place in the contract. Okay, uh, thank you. I, I, uh, so let me move on to my, my other couple of questions. Is um, if we if the board approves the the amendment and then we move forward, we're already kind of at step three based on the old schedule, where we we did the uh, the pre-select process is already done. Mm -hmm. um, the the value engineering is done, and so we're ready to kind of hit the ground and take off. Is that about where we are um yeah that's that's correct uh, we're, we're still moving forward in design but we need to be able to enter into new agreements uh specifically the professional services agreement to provide support services from the supplier to our existing design consultants or cool engineers so the design is moving forward we are we're looking to get into construction in next year and so we need, we need to enter into this new agreement with Calgon or our preferred UV equipment supplier to help get us there, essentially. Sure, sure. Okay, thank you. Um, when we did our, our uh, value engineering where we were evaluating the different UV systems, there were four different uh, proposed systems. And you mentioned that we sent a team out to, to look at them all and, and get some feedback from users and mm -hmm. so forth. Um, were, were those systems uh, largely in California? Yeah, uh, well, so there's two, different, there's two different facets to that question. So when, I, when we went out to the different wastewater treatment plants, some of them were in different states. Um, I recall, I think in Washington and potentially in New York as well, there were treatment plants that were similar to ours and that had equipment that we reviewed and analyzed and uh, were interested in. The value engineering study was actually a study performed for the overall design project that looked at exactly how we wanted to move forward with our issue of inadequate disinfection capacity and an aging UV system. So the value engineering study, I wanted to bring that up because that I think played a role in what's kind of led to the, you know, the subsequent, you know, somewhat delays of the design project and other uh, issues and other changes to the project, um, some for good, um, but the analysis that I was referring to as far as the pre-selection, that was done as a, as a separate um, process, essentially. Okay. The, and again, the reason I ask about whether it's California examples is we all know about uh, the, the standards in California and particularly the standards in region one where we are uh, and how stringent they are uh, as far as meeting all the the water quality requirements um, and so forth in your process. And I don't uh, take comfort in using New York because I've seen the Hudson River firsthand and it's not a great example of how to reuse water, but that's an aside. Um, so my last question is, um, are we able to, to, so that we avoid this price guarantee threshold that we would now move up to 22 months, um, with the possibility that something else could happen and we could have another delay and we could be back here in 24 months talking about this again. Is there a way for us to lock in the pricing even beyond or contractually, and maybe this is a question for Assistant Attorney McLean, is to lock in the pricing, for instance, if we were to make a progress payment towards the UV equipment, say, pick a number, 25% of the total project cost. If we make a project payment before this this 22 month deadline is up, can can that contractually lock us into that price so that we don't 
have this hanging over our head in the event that down the road, we run into another delay? I mean, it's possible. Um, it would have to be negotiated with the provider because we, we, my understanding is that we didn't ask that question of them. Um, it certainly is um, a good, you know, a concept that could make sense is that we would put a down payment so that we would hold the price. My understanding of the 22 months is that that was very carefully looked at and calculated to give us ample time to get through our bond financing, our design and go out for a bid. And um, we were, the way we have set up the MOU is that we're not committed to, um, to actually do the project by anything mm -hmm. until we actually award, until the board um, actually awards a contract for the construction of the project. Um, and we've completed our CEQA that would allow the board to um, legally make that decision. So um, we could build in, a, you know, an extension payment of sorts um, that could take multiple different forms. One option would be a down payment. Um, my concern is that that we wouldn't want to trigger that or come up against that until we had at least done the CEQA. And hopefully if we've done the CEQA, we've already put the contract out to bid and we're ready to go to award. So, um, you know, you want to make sure that the timing all makes sense um, with all of those things. So the, re the reason I raise that as a, as a potential option is because say we get up into 20 months uh, of the 22 months and it's clear from our staff and our contractor uh, that we're not going to meet the deadline. Um, could we already have a, a provision in the contract that says 60 days before you reach the the end the the deadline uh, we could make a x percent uh, uh, progress payment and lock in the price for another I don't know six months or whatever we thought we might need um, so that we just don't wind up something comes up beyond our control and we're up against this deadline again and then we have to reprice again. And so we've already added a million with this action. And then we would, whatever we would add on again, maybe it's another million. Um, and all of a sudden it's twice what we thought it was gonna be five years ago. So I just raised that as something and I'm happy to bring it up to the, to the when this comes before the board um, and to give you time to kind of research it a little bit and see if it's something that's possible or not. But I just raise it as sort of a, a fallback for us in the event that we run up against this this deadline again down the road and it's right. it's not a knock on staff it's it's not i'm not looking to blame anybody i'm just trying to sort of cover ourselves because a million dollars is a million dollars and um so just want us to be in a situation where we can get this built without having the fear or the concern about this deadline again on round two so we would we could certainly attempt to um, discuss such an extension payment or our option with the provider we we haven't at this point it, uh, attempted that discussion or that negotiation um as so it's possible i mean it would it would what it would entail is a modification renegotiation of certain a provision of the uh, mou that we have um already worked out um, I think as far as the timeline, I would defer to um, in the engineering staff um, to speak to, you know, how much cushion we've given ourselves to avoid coming up against that deadline, because I understand exactly what you're saying. It's something that, you know, we would do potentially in, you know, a real estate transaction where we, we, we may need more time to get through whatever prior processes um are needing to happen before we can commit um that that is certainly a consideration i would say that i think one more thing i would add um is that i believe the the 18 months that we had prior um i don't know that we ever attempted to renegotiate or extend that contract while we were still in the process but i think we were we were going to go so far past it that you know even a minor extension wouldn't have helped us get to where we are today uh, you know year and a half or so later 
Um, so I would say, you know, certainly a possibility, but I think I would want to defer to engineering staff to say, you know, how tight of a window do you think we have? Are we giving ourselves sufficient amount of time that it's worth to stop right now and pause and go back and really ask for, you know, that cushion or did we build that cushion in on the front end? Yeah. And, so, and uh, I so think if I could just add to, to give a little bit more context of um, sort of uh, initially and the schedule, I think, um, you know, we had a, 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 a leadership change and uh, with that, with a really big project looming, it made sense to take a, big, a step back and really take a look at it and understand what that cost would be and go down a process of the value engineering, which was mentioned was a very robust process. I think that has been completed and we've confirmed we're on the right track. And so we are really moving this forward. And I think that combined also with um, you know, the fires that did take staffing away, um, but, but I think we're a lot further down the road now uh, than when we were initially when uh, this occurred. And, and so I think there's more confidence um, from staff's perspective that we will be able to meet this timeline. But as Molly said, I'll uh, defer to Mark to give more clarification. But if that helps give a little more context, it was um, you know, something that made sense at the time when you do have a change in someone who really needs to get up to speed and understand for such a, a large undertaking to ensure that we were going the right direction. Yeah, these are, these are all excellent points. And there's, there's no doubt that this is a very complex and difficult project. And to some degree, we can't protect ourselves fully against all the, you know, probabilistic, you know, um, situations that could occur. But yes, I think we have included uh, enough of a, a cushion or a buffer that we should have no issue moving forward and, and meeting this, this 22 month deadline. That effectively pushes us into 2022, um, June, June of 20, I'm sorry, yeah, June of 2022, that we would need to um, award or, or advertise the project by. And we're anticipating next year that happening. And I don't see a reason why that can't happen. Now, of course, there are extenuating circumstances that we've all seen that have prevented it. But um, we have essentially over a, a year beyond what we're anticipating that this MOU would remain valid as far as the pricing escalation guarantee. Um, there also is a, a best and final price that that uh, is included as a provision of the MOU that allows for minor modifications to pricing based on scope changes as we see through the remainder of the design process. So we will, we will see uh, uh, a, a best and final price prior to advertising the overall construction project. Um, but, but it's not likely that that price would be less than what the estimate we're talking about here. Um, it, it could be. The MOU. It, it, it depends. I mean, if, if the design changes, for example, the number of control centers, as we talked about, if it, for some reason, they reduce the number of control centers or um, some other modification to the overall scope of the UV equipment, it could change it. But I think what you're pointing to is that often it does increase the cost. So um, I think that would be a, a, a safe um, uh, guess. Okay. Thank you. That's my questions. Board Member Badenfort, any questions or comments? Uh, sure. Uh, Board Member Mullen asked them pretty eloquently. Mine were uh, a little bit uh, clarifying questions. I think maybe I, it's a complex project. So I'm, I'm hoping you can clarify. It mm -hmm. looks like, on the one hand, we, we knew that our price guarantee would, would not last the life of how long it would take us to get to construction. And so I think in the vein of um, trying to prevent increases, kind of especially kind of of this nature, is it common that, um, I don't even know how to ask it, is it common that this kind of middle of the, of the, of the pre-development process, we would have this um, kind of retooling of the 
of the price? Did we anticipate, I mean, obviously it was only for, for 18 months and we knew that it was going to take us longer than 18 months to get to construction. Um, so obviously we didn't, did we not know? Well, no, we, the reason why we held the MOU for a period of 18 months, which is actually a bit longer than most suppliers feel comfortable with guaranteeing their prices because of bulk material fluctuations and direct labor increases that they have to still pay for. Um, no, we fully uh, anticipated meeting construction prior to that, but as we oh, found out, months. prior to that 18 okay. months escalation, yeah, it was just the, you know, a number of factors that contributed to a slightly longer delivery process. Okay, that's helpful. Um, and then uh, on slide nine, it says that overall construction costs uh, as previously reported, includes equipment cost. Mm -hmm. um, so there isn't a contingency that was approved in the original contract that that could offset some of the increased costs. Well, um, directly answering no, but that I don't think is is, is a problem. Um, we. Any contingency that we spoke about earlier was for design. And um, let's see, the, the $47 million represents our current estimate for construction. It includes the equipment cost, but also includes this million dollar price escalation as we performed a preliminary analysis prior to negotiations with our preferred supplier and determined or, or estimated the escalation of being about a million dollars. So we were able to budget that and we actually, or I, I reported to the board that, that increase and that $47 million price point based on what our current information is. Um, and so, no, we don't have anything uh, in the MOU that provides a contingency for price escalations uh, besides that provision that allows for a best and final price prior to um, advertising the project. Great, thank you. Um, and then I guess my final question was really kind of coming at it the, the opposite direction that um, in complex projects like these where we're dealing with price escalations and long-term projects, are there tools that uh, staff that you would recommend that you see putting into place um, that are common that can help avoid situations such as this? Um, it, I, I certainly understand the fluctuation of long uh, time horizon uh, projects. It's kind of a startling, uh, it, it's a startling number. So uh, I'm interested in your expertise of what do you, because I know you guys work so hard um, on, on putting these together so fantastically that what tools uh, can you see that might help um, offset this in the future. On the one hand, it isn't really technically over budget, so we appreciate that. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, thank you for that. And it does seem to coincide with um, uh, Board Member Mullen's questions as well. So I think we can look into that in a, at, a, at a deeper level and report back um, if you'd like. Um, I think, you know, this is, is just one of those unique projects that have so many different moving parts, so many different facets that really the MOU is one of the tools that we use to address these difficult constraints of, of the delivery of the overall project. You know, we need to somehow budget for pricing. We need to establish a relationship between, you know, an, a, a unique uh, equipment supplier and our overall design consultants and process. Um, so, you know, this MOU and trying to guarantee a price for a set period of time is one of the tools that we use to, to deal with one of, or to manage one of these projects. Whereas a, a more simple project, you can just specify that pumps will go into this wet well, or we will use these material, you know, or, or whatever. And then the contractor can select various equipment at various pricing that during the advertisement and award process. But we're not afforded that, that luxury on a project like this. We need to get into contract with a supplier and utilize their services throughout the design process. And then furthermore, uh, enter into an agreement on what the cost will be so that we can budget it, we can raise bond funding and do a number of other um, you know, procedures to, to support the construction process. Um, so I guess short answer for you is I don't think I have a, a direct answer how, how we can mitigate this type of concern that the 
pricing may expire due to unforeseen circumstances, but I think we can look into that certainly. Thank you very much. Thanks for helping me understand. This was a, this is a complex one for me. I appreciate it. No worries. So Mr. Casare, um, Assistant uh, City Attorney McLean uh, kind of made reference to one issue I wanted to bring up, and I think I already know the answer to it, but um, when we were approaching the deadline for the price guarantee, the original 18 months, do we have any discussions with Calgon about extending that 18 months or uh, renegotiating it then to try and uh, buy us some more time without getting hit with a million dollar increase? So, um, you know, for, that's a great question. Frankly put, I, I wasn't the project manager at that time. I know that we were anticipating this uh, provision in the MOU uh, sunsetting. And so we were anticipating um, new negotiations with Calgon and to come before the board during that time or, or close to that time for, for a new agreement. Um, uh, Deputy Director Walton, do you have anything uh, to add to that? Did, did we anticipate? Um... Sorry. Um... We did. We were aware that the uh, guaranteed price was nearing expiration. We had conversations um, with staff at that time recommending to re-engage with Calgon. Calgon, if I remember correctly, was um, very willing and, and interested in discussing renegotiation at that time. Um, as Director Burke mentioned earlier, uh, due to the change in leadership, and uh, kind of that big direction of this huge project, um, undertaking a huge project and really needing to pause and reconsider the direction we were going. Um, there was an interest um, from the city's part um, at that time to renegotiate um, the terms uh, given we weren't really confident in the direction that the project was going. So we didn't wanna kind of drag Calgon along with us at that time, um, but they were willing to and we did discuss it. Okay, thank you. Um, I would just like to kind of echo what Board Member Mullen has, has proposed. I think, uh, I don't wanna see us prolong the, the process or delay the, the project any further, but if there is a way to um, quickly negotiate some sort of an arrangement with Calgon that would buy us some additional time uh, by putting down some amount of money, whether it's 25% or whatever, towards the end of the 22 months, if we were in that position, it would be nice to have that option and that flexibility without having to go back and renegotiate again. So um, I don't know, that probably throws a monkey wrench into where we're at today, but um, I'd be interested in staff's response to that. Okay. I think, uh, uh, Chair Galvin um, and uh, board members, we can definitely bring that back. Um, it will um, delay our schedule a bit, um, so we will not be bringing this forward to the August 6th BPU meeting, I don't believe. Um, I'll, I'll check in with staff afterwards just to confirm that, but I think it will delay us bringing this back to the board, but we can explore uh, that option. And um, if we're able to successfully put that in, we'll add that to the MOU, bring this back to the board. Uh, my question would be, did, would you want this to come back to the subcommittee first, or do you, would you give us direction to explore that option if we're successful or not, either way, bring this back to the board, or do you want us to come back to the subcommittee first? Well, may, maybe the first question to the committee members is, um, given the discussion that we've had, given uh, Mr. Casare's belief that the 22 months is more than adequate, are we comfortable going to the full board with a recommendation that's been requested of us or are we willing to hit pause and explore this other issue? Um, I'll comment on it since I'm the one that sort of raised the issue um, is I'd like to try to avoid delaying the project since it's been a delayed already for a period of time for a lot of reasons beyond our control. but. My, my biggest concern is we've had, since we originally let this contract, we've had two wildfires and now we're in the middle of a pandemic. And I fear that this time next year, we're gonna be, still be doing Zoom meetings um, and waiting for a solution to that. Um, and 
I'm, I'm just concerned that the project is going to slip and we're going to run up against this deadline. I'm absolutely comfortable uh, recommending the, the approval uh, with direction to staff to come up with a solution that gives us some protection if we run up against the deadline uh, to work up with the language. It's obvious we have a relationship with Calgon um, and um, they, they appear to be a willing and we can reiterate our, our commitment to the project it's just we're we're ramping back up with the with the the new amendment, but I'm really comfortable uh, approving the recommendation, uh, provided staff comes up with some language that gives us some protection uh, if we run up against the deadline again. Okay, board member Badenfort. Oh, okay. Go ahead. I, I I have some. There's variations on the theme that I think may be helpful to, to, to put out there, but I defer to Member Baden for it to weigh in first. Uh, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. We will obviously have another opportunity to, uh, to comment and, and, and to make a decision. Um, I, I'm somewhat agnostic about the, uh, the solution for the uh, potential language um, and for the potential mitigation of this dynamic. Um, I, I, I think we have a, a, a strong staff that will, that will look at options top to bottom. Um, and so since we'll be able to hear this again, I'm comfortable with proceeding. Okay, Assistant uh, City Attorney McLean. Well, I appreciate Board Member Badenford's comments because that's kind of the direction I was, I was going was how much um, specificity do you want to provide in in what staff could evaluate at this point I can think of different ways where we could try to build in um, some protection um, to you know to to not get um, beyond the 22 months and then have to renegotiate um, I don't down payment is certainly one concept um, and that implies that the money that the city puts down, one, we have to be prepared to be committed, but it also implies that the money that the city puts down then applies to the purchase price, which I guess we would just ask the, the bidders to, to deduct that from their bid um, uh, line item in their bid. Um, there's, a, there's also the potential that we could just ask for the right to extend for a fee typically that would be a smaller amount, would not commit us to um, moving to the project. So it wouldn't have to happen prior to CEQA, for, exa for example. Um, so it would keep a larger portion of flexibility in place, but it would probably cost some amount that would not necessarily go towards the ultimate purchase price. So I was, I thought I'd put a couple of options out there for the board to, to or the committee to, to if they want to weigh in or do they want to just defer to um, directors um, purview on that? Um, or I'm just looking for, you know, I wanted to provide some thoughts that I had about different options of how to proceed with that. I would say that that's another option that should be explored. If we can, for example, if we know towards the end of the 22 months that we're really close, but we're just maybe, maybe CEQA hasn't completed or whatever, being able to pay them 10,000 a month or 25,000 a month to extend for a month. If we know we're going forward, um, I think that would be an option uh, as well as a, just some sort of a, a firm down payment and commitment that would apply to the purchase price. Um, so I, I think I'm comfortable leaving staff with the flexibility to try and come up with a, a solution that you think Calgon would, would potentially go for. Board member so, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I agree with uh, <laughs> Chair Galvin is uh, uh, we have, we have great staff here and a lot of smart minds uh, staring at this, um, at this computer that we're sitting at. And so I would, uh, I would be perfectly comfortable uh, letting those people, I think you've heard the concerns and how we get there is you're a lot smarter than, than me. So I would defer to you. And if so, you come so, up with something, Director Burke, that you want to run by the committee, perhaps we can do it in uh, an email fashion. I don't know if that would run us foul of anything, but 
just to so get some. I just would like to get clarification to make sure I'm understanding uh, the direction um, in terms of the, this would be to the MOU. Are you as a committee requesting, which I think you are, that we have a solution in the MOU before we bring it to the board? Or are you, ex are you recommending the MOU ex currently stated which would mean we'd go to the board on August 6th, but then we'd need to bring back an amendment to the MOU in the future. I just wanna make sure I'm clear on, on what, what I'm understanding from the committee. Well, for, from my perspective, I'm fine if we go forward with the recommendation and we approve the amendments to the MOU and the new MSA um, or PSA with the understanding that staff is going to at least explore whether there's options available to us to, to eliminate this potential risk. And if staff comes back and says, either Calgon won't renegotiate or we can't come up with a solution or we're super confident that the 22 months is all of the time we're gonna need, then we don't request any further amendments to the uh, MOU. Okay, is that, is, that um, is there concurrence with the other committee members on that direction? Okay, okay, then I think I understand. Um, and so it sounds like we we can uh, look to, but I but I will will strategize uh, with the team after this committee meeting. Um, and uh, well, I would leave it like on we'll the August sixth. Yeah. Agenda. Yes. Got it. Okay. Thank you, I appreciate the clarification. All right, um, do we need to have a formal vote on the recommendation? I guess we do. Secretary Perez, do you want to uh, do a roll call based on what we've just discussed? Uh, Chair Galvin, apologies for the interruption, but I think you have to open for public comment before you do that. Oh, thank you. We'll now open it up for public comment on item 3.1. If you wish to make a comment via Zoom, please raise your hand. If you're dialing in via telephone, please dial star nine to raise your hand. Do we have any public comments? I see no raised hands. Okay, thank you. Now we'll do the roll call vote. Okay, uh, Chairman Galvin. Aye. Board Member Badenfort. Aye. Board Member Mullen. Aye. All right, thank, thank you. Good comments all the way around. I hope we didn't, uh, like I say, throw a monkey wrench into staff's plans, but I think um, this is at least a good alternative to explore between now and when uh, we have to make the final commitment to order that, that material so and equipment. Any other questions, comments by board or staff? All right, if not, we are adjourned. Thank you all, have a great rest of your afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.